How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's the start of the weekend and we've got two episodes in store for you guys. I'd like to introduce you today to Lena. She's from Lincrusta Heritage and uh, she's going to talk to us today about some of these exciting papers that we've managed to get off the wall at Regency. So what paper is this then Lena? This is um, an anaglypta. Yes, I thought it was an anag... Ah, not a superglypta. No, it's an anaglypta. Ah. As soon as I saw this, I did recognise it. This particular pattern, yeah? This particular pattern, but it, it's one yeah. of a number that are very, very similar. So with anaglypta, you have to be sort of quite careful because they have a tendency to sort of maybe put another design there and then renumber it and it's a oh, separate yeah, design. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, what I've, I've discovered is that actually this is quite a significant paper because it was an anaglypta that was designed by... Owen W. Davis, who was a Victorian architect of some renown. And although we actually don't know an awful lot about him anymore, um, he did work uh, within the fields of the aesthetic movement. And so he's designing papers for anaglypta and the other raised relief materials to include Lincrusta as well. So when we find things like this, actually in situ is actually quite it's interesting. It's quite exciting, yeah. Because yeah, this yeah. is the first one I've ever found that was actually an anaglypta by that gentleman. It's strange, isn't it? Because you see, see the thickness of that now. Well, they did. It's quite interesting. They actually made different types. They used different plates and they did low relief and high relief and some anaglyptas can be up to seven inches deep. So a lot of people are actually confused. They think that what they have yeah. is a plaster ceiling but what they have is a bespoke anaglypta lincrusta ceiling. I thought this was the lincrusta one because of this. It's got hessian in with the resin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. D depending on its age, anaglypta was invented in 1887 by Thomas J. Palmer, who was actually the London storeroom manager of Lincrusta at the time. And he took that to Frederick Walton, who was the inventor of Lincrusta Walton. Walton, in his wisdom, decided to, to not run with it. So Palmer went off um, and got it manufactured and it actually was launched in 1887, 10 years after yeah. Lincrusta. But it was actually only in production for six years under the Palmer management with his uh, directors and fellows. And then it was bought out by the wallpaper manufacturers in the late 1890s. Now, the wallpaper manufacturers during that latter part of the 19th century and the early 20th century actually bought up 98% of all the wallpaper and paint manufacturers in the country. Oh, yeah. um, and so that's why um, this is quite interesting because I think this is on that cusp. It's not necessarily one of the earliest papers because we don't have physical records for the early designs under Palmer. So oh, those, okay. those, that first 1887 to 1893, we don't have a catalogue that we can reference. Yeah. And all the information regarding these race relief materials up until recently was almost entirely lost due to people's lack of interest, but also the fact that it had been stored and got damp and someone had thrown it away. Okay, so moving on to this paper, we've moved into later than perhaps Lincrusta, okay. um, but earlier than the Anaglypta. Oh, that's earlier than that. Well, it depends really on what it looks like under a microscope, because this is oh. Lignamule. Originally, it was an American invention. It was made out of wood pulp. It was invented in 1880, but it was launched in England in about 1886. And once it came over to England, they changed the recipe oh, and the they, process, yeah, yeah, and they, they, yeah. they actually used um, a, more of a textile. So. The recipe called for rag pulp, so it's 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 more like a handmade uh, rag paper, yeah, uh, yeah, which yeah. we should be able to see. You can see that because of the fibres in it, can't you? There's more, yeah, it's more yeah. fibery, and we would be able to see that quite clearly under the microscope. But if it turns yeah. out to be wood pulp, uh, we would be able to see that as well, and we'd be able to date it far more accurately because obviously, if it turns out to be wood pulp. Um, then it's going to be closer to 1886, later on in that century. That. Overall, I think they're all contemporary with each other, so I would expect this to be rag paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. saying they're all going to be of a similar age because yeah. of when the place was, exactly. The place exactly. was done. Yeah. The company that used this uh, were bought at Alan Cockshut or Cockshoot and Co were purchased okay. by the wallpaper manufacturers in the late 19th century. And I think that these were, as a whole, probably sold under the banner of the wallpaper manufacturers, which means that we can date most of these to about the, mid, uh, the, the beginning of the 20th century. 
but we can't set that in stone and further research will help to highlight that. But this is a design number 521, but unfortunately, again, as with most, we can't truly date it and we can't tell you who designed it. It is a shame though, isn't it? Because of is. all the effort that's gone into yeah, it. Yeah, it, 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 it might not. been lost. Well, yeah. it, it might not be. I have a, a number of years of research um, okay. that I'm going to continue to do in order to mm. sort of find out more about these papers. And the more people who come to me and say, I've got this, and I know that it was in my house in, in 1905, yeah, the more yeah, we can yeah, help, yeah, yeah. the more we look at it under a microscope, yeah. the more we can build a database. But right, these were yeah. forgotten papers, as I've said. Uh, people didn't really know what they had. And once they discovered it was paper, it became mass produced, so therefore mm. had lost its value as far as they were concerned. They are incredibly valuable, being over 100 years old. They're one yeah. of the oldest papers you're gonna find in situ. There are not gonna be many older than this. In this country, because of our weather, because of temperatures, yeah. molds, <laughs> yeah. etc. cetera. So this is, this, is, um, uh, this is a rare find. And to find four materials in this building alone, because this isn't the last of them, uh, there are some upstairs that uh, give us our fourth reference but at the moment we're going to talk about the lincruster which yeah. you found which is actually the most important in the building really? mainly because until recently there's only one identified design by lincruster through a victorian designer by the name of dr christopher dresser now he is incredibly important as far as the aesthetic movement. He designed in the Japanese style, went to America and was a leading exponent of that latter 19th century. So this paper here was found in the kitchen upstairs, wasn't it? And it was found between the two walls that had been inserted. And this would have gone around the top of the room with this at the bottom. Yeah, it's like a border. Yeah, this is a very early design and we found it in the earliest reference material we have for Lincrusty, which is wow. 1880. And this is the first one other than the one held at the Cooper Hewitt in New York the Museum. This is the really? earliest one I've ever found, dated wise, yeah. along with this cool. one. That would have been on top of the dado rail or as a dado rail, would it? It's not, no. This one is actually part of a much larger paper. It's been cut off this design. Now this design would have gone either in the bottom of a room. Oh yeah, that would have been the dado. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's attached, it's actually part of that design and all the oh, way through the yeah. catalogue that this pro was produced all through the 19th century, um, this was part of this design. Mm. So when they mounted it uh, with this, they must have used this somewhere else. So you know that in this building, most likely the hallway or the stairs. Well, that's how I remember Lincruster because Lincruster was a hardware in an embossed paper and yeah. a lot of, lot of times in the past when I was a young lad, I remember seeing it and a date lot below the dado. Yeah, exactly. Then you had the dado rail, and then you had the dado, and that's where it would have been. Yeah. And then this is, would have been a freeze around the top, that's possibly. Yeah, 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 but yeah. when this was invented, what they were doing is they were producing materials that could go throughout the room. Mm. So actually you could have had door plates, placemats. Yeah, yeah, of the same. Yeah, design. dados, yeah, 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 borders, yeah, 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 freezes, yeah, yeah. and then fillers in the middle as well. And then you oh, would have come right. up. Oh, that's right, yeah, like panelling in the, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously not at this date, but later on they started yeah. to do what Anaglypta had done and they started to replicate these large mm. ornate ceilings. And they're the ones that most people say, oh no, it's definitely plaster and it's definitely not. Yeah. Because actually plaster ceilings are incredibly expensive. And oh, from the, yeah, if yeah, you were yeah, going yeah. to install one, in the latter 19th century, it's likely that you would have put in a lincruster if you were able to, uh, yeah. because it was far simpler. It was manufactured in these colours. If you can see, it was. This is the the rear of the material in that dark brown. It will have discoloured over time, but this one is is multicoloured, which we see very rarely. At times, they would undertake commission for mm. materials, but this one they've actually um, manufactured it in these colours. But it has probably been gilded at some time, not necessarily originally, although it has been done quite well. So this would have been added Can you imagine afterwards. that, the amount of labour that it would have taken to have done that going round, because the rooms are not small, are they? No, they're not, they're large. But this is a, this is a room that would have been quite important. I've never found reference to the fact that um, Lincruster advertised who designed their materials. And we can tell that it's 19th century because it has a buckram back. You see there with the different colouring on there, mm -hmm. somebody didn't paint that on individually, No, it was embossed. They? It was embossed in. Walton was an inventor. 
and he actually invented the machinery to make this. That was what he was doing. That was what he was interested in. Um, and he went on having previously invented linoleum. Mm. He then went on to something called uh, inlaid linoleum. Um, and that's where they used to inlay different colours. I have never seen the buckram that was on the back of the original Lincruster. I knew it was there, but yeah. towards the end of the 19th century, they removed it and replaced it with paper. So we know this is this an is, early, this an is early 19th one. century. Yeah. Even more so because it's Dr. Christopher Dresser. He was, he was yeah. so significant. I mean, we talk about him on the Antiques Roadshow quite often, don't we? We'll see it on the Antiques yeah, Roadshow. Yeah, with, heard, yeah, and he with his, yeah. his, his silver kettles and, yeah. and teapots. It and is things. amazing. You see, you can understand why probably a lot of this stuff gets lost because we've taken it off and you, you're looking at it and thinking, oh yeah, but most people just throw it away, don't yeah. they? If you enjoyed that guys, we've got more in store tomorrow where Lena and myself will take a stroll around the property and give you an insight into more of these panels and the history of them.